Contracts versus who God is. Our main scripture reading is taken from Matthew 20, verse 1 to 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man, landowner, who is a householder, who went out early in the morning to hire labourers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the labourers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour, and saw others standing idle in the market place, and said unto them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour, and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out, and found others standing idle, and said unto them, Why have you been standing here all the day idle? They said unto him, Because no man has hired us. He said unto them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right you shall receive. So when evening had come, the lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the labourers, and give them their wages, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came, who were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a denarius. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a denarius. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, landowner, saying, These last have worked only one hour, and you have made them equal unto us, who have borne the burden and heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go your way. I will give unto this last man the same as unto you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with mine own things? Or is your eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many are called, but few chosen. Chapter 1 God is an honest employer. In the days of Jesus, the people used to work for 12 hours in a day. They would receive for that 12-hour shift a wage of one denarius. Jesus tells us that the landowner is God the Father. When we are serving God, we can expect to receive something from Him. God Himself tells us that it is not in vain that we are serving the Lord. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and every man or woman shall receive his or her own reward according to his own labor. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 8. When we serve God, let us be expectant that He will reward our labor of love. Paul tells us, We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. 1 Thessalonians 1, 2-4 For God is not unrighteous, unjust, to forget your work and labor of love which you have showed toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Hebrews 6 verse 10 When we come to God and when we serve him, let us believe what he said about himself. He is an honest employer. It would be unjust for him to forget our labor of love and our work of faith. But even worse than that, it will be breaking his own scriptures if he does not pay us the right amount of money or does not pay us at all. Jesus tells us that the scripture cannot be broken. John 10 verse 35 Let us believe what God says in his word, for God and his words are one, and he has magnified his word above all his name. Psalm 138 verse 2 Forever, O Lord, your word is settled or stands firm in heaven. Psalm 119 verse 89 The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Psalm 138 verse 8 Chapter 2 
Shun false humility and man-made religion. I used to work with a dear sister in an outreach program for children. The sister used to do a similar outreach for a big Christian charity. That Christian charity was not paying its employees the normal wage, but it was giving them half the normal wage. And they asked their employees to have faith that God will give them the other half. They told them that if they had enough faith like the founders of that Christian charity, God will also meet their need. That sounds very deep spiritually. But the truth is, for the five years she worked for that charity, she struggled with her family even to eat, not to talk about putting some nice raiment on her body. So the sister, when she was working with me, told us how wonderful it was to build her faith. After further discussion, she told me of a brother in her church she was working with, but the brother gave her nothing for six months. And she complained about that brother, and she murmured. I told her, Sister, the brother also is running a charity, so why do you want to be paid by that brother who is running a secular charity when you decided to use your faith for God to meet your need when you worked for that Christian charity? I said to her, Sister, the truth is, in your heart you were also murmuring and complaining when you were working for that Christian charity. People have misrepresented God. They portray Him as a dishonest God who does not pay His employees or pays them only half of the normal wage, and for the rest they must use faith. But when you see Jesus talking about the Father, he gave his employees one denarius, the normal wage. People must never impose their so-called faith on others. They will tell you, God provided for us when we started this ministry, so since we have hired you, we ask you also just to believe. It is not right. If you use other people's services, pay them the normal wage. It is not up to them to give it back to the ministry. I paid that sister the normal wage when she was working with me, and she never gave it back to the ministry. So many people out there have been complaining and murmuring against God and the saints. A pastor friend of mine was using the services of a cameraman to record their TV programs. They were not paying the brother a dime. And the brother was doing great recordings for their church. And the pastor recommended him to another church so that he could also do their recordings. I stopped all of them at once. I told them, you are misrepresenting God. God never exploits people. You are using the brother's talents, equipment and time and are not giving him a dime and using the name of Jesus to do that. Jesus told us exactly what kind of employer God was. God does not exploit people. I told them from this day forward, pay the brother, and if you recommend him elsewhere, pay him too. And leave it to the brother to sow back that money into your ministry or keep it as the Lord leads him and not as you are trying to impose it on him. Chapter 2-1 The Example of Our Father Abraham our father Abraham went with his 300 men to fight the confederacy of kings led by Kedorlaomer, who had captured his nephew Lot and his family in Genesis chapter 14. Abraham believed that God was his provider, his Jehovah Jireh. So, when he had defeated those kings and taken all their spoil, he restored it to the king of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham was full of faith and believed he did not need what belonged to the king of Sodom and Gomorrah. So he told them boldly, I have raised my hand to the Lord, God Most High, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap, and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should say, I have made Abram rich. Genesis 14, verse 22 to 23. But Father Abraham did not impose his faith on the 300 men who went with him to war. 
Though he refused to receive any reward for delivering Sodom and Gomorrah, yet he said, Except only what the young men have eaten and the portion of the men who went with me, Ana, Eshkol, and Mamre, let them take their portion. Genesis 14, verse 24. So Abram asked the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah to give his three hundred servants, who were led by Ana, Eshkol, and Mamre, their portion of the spoils. Jesus tells us, if we say that we are children of Abraham, we must do the work of Abraham. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. John 8 verse 39 2 2. False Humility Paul warns us, Beware lest any man spoil you, cheat you, and take you captive through philosophy and vain deceit or empty deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ, or not according to Christ. Colossians 2 verse 8 Jesus tells us that if we have seen him, we have seen the Father. We know that whatever Jesus says about the Father is true. Let us do all things according to Christ, who is the seed of Abraham. Since we are in Christ and have become the children of Abraham through Christ Jesus, let us walk like our father Abraham walked, and let us walk like Jesus walked. God rewards everyone who serves him. Let no one spoil you of that reward. Let no one cheat you or beguile you of that reward with their philosophy, theology or religion which is not based on Christ. Whatever people tell you, they must prove it in the word of God, for Jesus is the word of God. Revelation 19 verse 13 So if something is according to Christ or after Christ, it must be based on the word of God. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. 1 John 5 verse 7 If it does not bear witness with the word of God, it is neither of the Father, nor of Jesus, nor of the Holy Spirit. It is established by men. It is a man-made religion, philosophy, theology, but it is not of God. Paul goes even further to drive this point home and says, Let no man or woman beguile, cheat you of your reward, in a voluntary humility, taking delight in false humility, and worshipping of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Colossians 2 verse 18 it is an old trick of Satan. He pulled it with Adam and Eve in Genesis 3. Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Genesis 3 verse 13 The enemy always wants us to question the word of God. Has God really said? With all these scriptures from the Old and the New Testament, it is clear what the will of God is, but many well-meaning Christians buy into that deceit of Satan. They cheat themselves of the reward God has in store for them. Adam and Eve cheated themselves of the reward of enjoying the Garden of Eden, and they found themselves expelled from that garden. Many well-meaning Christians, like that sister who used to work for that Christian charity, she thought she was voluntarily humbling herself, but it was a false humility. By so doing, men tried to establish their self-righteousness and make God look bad. They say to God, look how humble I am. But God is saying, what you are doing is not according to my word, and not according to Christ. The truth about that is, people will be vainly puffed up by their fleshly mind. They will say, I have more faith than you all because I refuse to be paid for what I did. But deep inside them, they will be complaining and murmuring. God wants us to serve him joyfully. So let everyone give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 
Let us give our time, our energy into the work of the kingdom, not unwillingly, grudgingly, because people are coercing us, or of necessity because people say it must be and cannot be otherwise in this ministry or church. You will work and not be paid and glorify God. God is not glorified in any of these things. If we had a physical employer who did not pay our wage, we would sue him, and that employer would have a bad reputation among his competitors. Do we think that God is such an employer? No. God is far better than the best employer you ever worked for on earth. Paul tells us, these things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body or asceticism, which are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. Colossians 2 verse 23. It is not from God but men. It is a self-imposed religion, and they suffer things that God did not intend for them to suffer. But they do that to make themselves feel super spiritual. They establish their own holiness, their own righteousness, and they feel good about that. That dear sister and her family, while she worked for their Christian charity, were ascetic, and they thought God was doing that to them. May we always do things according to Christ and not otherwise. 2. 3. Love those who despitefully use you. Luke 6 verse 28. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who despitefully use you. Unfortunately in Christendom we still have many believers who do not know that God rewards everybody that works in his vineyard. And even when some of them know, they still ignore the word of God and exploit brothers and sisters in the church. They despitefully use us. We are called to bless and not to curse. Out of our mouth and heart must only go forth blessings. We pray for them that God will open their eyes so that they will do things in the kingdom according to Christ. We pray that they will do the works of Abraham, since Abraham is their father. But above all, we pray for ourselves, that God will give us the grace to love them unconditionally and not to resent them for what they are doing or have done to us. I was working with some brethren, and they asked me to go to a location. I had to pay for my train fare. They were supposed to be paying for my train fare too, since their own train fares were being paid for. But they thought that I did not need the money. So I went a couple of times because the Lord told me to go and help them. But when the Lord did not tell me to go, I stayed at home. So they were asking themselves, why did G not come? I knew that they knew the scriptures, and I know that God told them to pay my fare. So why should I use my food money for the train fare and suffer hunger? So they decided to pay for my train fare and I went to London, where they wanted me to be. I was working with another group of Christians on a mission. The previous person who was doing that mission work was being paid a salary and his accommodation was also paid for by that group of Christians. But the moment I took over, they never paid me a salary and never paid for my accommodation for the couple of years that I worked with them. Not that I was doing that for the money, but we should not hold the word of God with partiality. Some thought, this is a young man. He has not suffered in ministry like us, who have been in the ministry for years. It looks like we have worked in the Lord's vineyard for 12 hours and this young man has only worked in the Lord's vineyard for one hour. He should not be receiving any salary and privileges like those who have borne the heat of the sun for 12 hours. Therefore, we will not pay him any salary nor pay for his accommodation so that he will suffer the ways we suffered. And only after he has suffered like we suffered and been in ministry for many years like us, then we will consider giving him the same salary and pay for his accommodation. Jesus, in his parable of Matthew 20, 
1 to 16 says that the father does not treat the young minister that way. He gives him the same salary, though they have not been in ministry as long as the older ministers have been. My prayer is that we will know the heart of God and not abuse and misuse young ministers. You do not have to give them a big salary and do not be partial, so that you will pay one minister and not pay the other. May God bless them. Paul says, Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 14 This group of Christians had the money, but they were financially burdensome to that young minister. If we say we are spiritual parents, or we have been in the faith, or in ministry before, then we should make it easy for those who are coming up in the faith and in ministry and not be burdensome unto them. Our heart should be what I went through. I will not allow anybody to go through it if it is in the power of my hand to help. That is why I write these Bible studies. What took me years of studying and searching the scriptures, I put them into writings so that the Christians who come after me can just read the revelation and go and live it out. They'll be able to do greater works than I, for they climb upon my spiritual shoulders to reach higher levels with God. If I had an evil eye, I would say they also have to spend the time I spent in prayer, fasting, reading and studying the scriptures to get the revelation God gave me. But when you know the ways of God, you understand that God does not think that way. So you should not think that way either. You should go and prepare the way for other believers by making the crooked ways straight, the rough places smooth, exalting the valleys by banking them up, and to bringing mountains low, so that the believers coming after you can run this race of faith as fast as possible, without worrying about pitfalls or stumbling blocks, for you have taken them all out of the way. Luke 3 verse 5 I have no condemnation whatsoever. I know God is not condemning me because the way of the kingdom is clearly stated. If one party is ignoring the way of the kingdom, I am not under any obligation to do what they are asking me to do unless God tells me to do it or I decide of my own free will to do it. Let us avoid false humility. If we are doing something for free, let us do it with all our strength, might and heart. If we cannot do it, we tell that person or ministry I cannot do it for free, I need to feed my family. I need to let them know that when it is convenient for me, I will do it. Paul, the great apostle to the Gentiles, asked the disciple Apollos to go with a missionary team into Corinth, but Apollos said no. Paul writes to the church, Now concerning our brother Apollos, I strongly urged him to come to you with the brethren, but he was quite unwilling to come at this time. However, he will come when he has a convenient time. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 12 Apollos could have said yes, just to please Paul, but while he would have been on that journey, he would have been complaining and murmuring. God does not want us to be murmuring and complaining. Or Apollos could have said, I will go. But on the day of the missionary journey, he would not turn up. I have seen in the ministry many people like that. They say yes to please the pastor, the prophet or the apostle, but they do not do anything at all. God wants us to do things from our heart. Apollos wanted to serve God, but the time Paul wanted to send him was not convenient for him, but he said he would come when it was convenient for him. Let us learn to speak the truth to each other in love. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Ephesians 4 verse 15 but sometimes some ministry or some brothers or sisters have nothing to pay us with. 
If they had, we know they would give us the normal wage for our services. So in that case, we help them with our whole heart. And when they are on their feet, able to function on their own, we either decide to let them continue on their own or to be involved with them for a long period. Let our love be without hypocrisy or dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Romans 12 verse 9 So let us love the brethren and the sisters, and let us never feel like people are exploiting us or are taking advantage of our generosity. If we are helping people or a ministry, and we are not able to tell them that what they are asking us to do is inconvenient for us right now, or we feel like we can never say no to them, something is wrong. We have become a captive of that ministry or person. Only God has that authority over us. To be continued.